Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace and peace to all of you in the name of the risen Christ on behalf of the greater Northwest Episcopal area of the United Methodist Church. It is my honor and joy to welcome you to this service of worship today. We rejoice together in the power of the Holy Spirit, the spirit that knows no boundaries of time or distance or even pandemic as we gather together across time, across distance, celebrating the words of the psalmist that it is good and pleasant when kindred gather together in whatever way they can so that there is unity. In this morning's worship service, we'll hear the story of the appearance of the risen Jesus to the disciples as they gathered together in a locked room, and especially his appearance and his conversation with the disciple Thomas. We'll hear from scripture readers and musicians, from storytellers and preachers, from photographers, all about where they see the spirit of the risen Christ breaking through walls today, just as he did in that upper room so many years ago. So come, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter whether you feel like you are sitting at the foot of the cross or whether you feel like you still are on a cross, come and be refreshed. Come and taste and see that God is good. Come, let us worship.
Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the gift of this day and for the new life we experience this Easter season. We thank you for your grace, which covers this entire world. We offer you the broken shards of our lives, trusting that you will reassemble them into a beautiful mosaic. We long to see you face to face, even as we catch only glimpses of your goodness. As we worship this day, help us to offer ourselves fully to you. Transform our fear into hope, Break down the walls of our hearts so that your light shines not only into our lives, but through our every thought, word, and action. We pray these things in the name of your risen one, Jesus the Christ. Amen. A reading from John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he replied, Unless I see the nail marks in his hand, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails, and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in a house, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, 
Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus replied, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see me and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence. Signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing, you will have life in his name. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. These four walls. After a year of the COVID-19 pandemic and quarantine and isolation and staying at home, I have gotten pretty familiar with these four walls. What used to be just a trip to the kitchen to get a drink of water has become a field trip for me, seeing the other part of the house. If I'm feeling especially adventuresome, I might even go all the way to the living room where there's a couch and a TV set. These four walls are part of who I am. But after a year, after this year, I can feel these four walls starting to close in on me. When people go to prison, we call the four walls that they're in a cell. But this is also the word that ancient Christian monks and even monks and contemplative Christians today use for their room. Go to your cell, someone once said, and it will teach you everything. There are some days that these four walls feel like a prison cell to me. And there are some days that they feel like the cell of a monastery, a place that is sacred, even though it's not very fancy or big, a place where Jesus comes and meets me where I am. And over the past year, I've been surprised almost every day about how that's happened here in these four walls. Sometimes I meet Jesus Christ when I look out the window and I see the giant cedar tree in my neighbor's yard and two or three crows fighting it out for the top, topmost branch. Sometimes Jesus makes his way into these four walls through the screen of my computer and the faces of all of the people that I'm doing good work, important work with, even though they're really far away and I really miss them. Sometimes Jesus breaks into these four walls in the form of a text message from someone I haven't heard from in a long time who says, I was thinking of you today and wondering how you were doing. Jesus breaks into the four walls of my cell in all of these ways and so many more. For although these walls are impenetrable boundaries to be, boundaries that keep me safe from getting sick, there is no wall or height or depth that can separate me or any of us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. In the scripture you heard Mark read today, the disciples are gathered together in a locked room. 
it's shortly after the events of the crucifixion of that early first Easter morning, and no one is quite sure what's going to happen. All we know from the scripture is that they're afraid. They're afraid in particular of the authorities. If that's what happened to Jesus, I think they might be considering if that's what happened to Jesus, what might happen to us? And so the disciples too are gathered afraid in their four walls when all of a sudden in their midst, they see Jesus. Scripture says he breathed his peace onto them. He breathed his peace. Isn't that lovely? He shows them his wounds in his hands and feet and side. Wounds from the cross that are now transformed into something that's filled with new life. Wounds that in some way that they still don't understand have been healed. Jesus breathes his peace. He shows them his wounds and he gives them the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he tells them that they too have the power to forgive, the power to set one another free. And if they use this power, that the world will change. The disciples were all gathered together in their four walls, but their friend Thomas wasn't there. You know Thomas. There's another adjective that usually comes before his name, Doubting Thomas. That's not what he's called in scripture, but he's called that because he tells them, unless I see his side and the marks in his hands and his feet, I won't believe. And so Jesus does what Jesus always does comes back. Jesus comes back through the walls, those four walls, into the room where the disciples are with Thomas. And he breathes his peace and he shows his hands and his side. And Thomas proclaims, my Lord and my God. Friends, Jesus meets us where we are, even when we're in quarantine, even when we're staying at home, even when we are afraid like those early disciples, afraid to move, afraid to risk, afraid that what has just happened to other people might happen to us next. Our fear is no obstacle for Jesus Christ. Jesus walks through the, my four walls. He walked through walls for the disciples, even for Thomas. And he walks through walls for all of us. Thanks be to God. We're at a moment, a year into this pandemic, where some of the walls that were keeping us safe are starting to come tumbling down. There are vaccines. There is a sense that things are getting better. That we're moving into the next phase of who we are called to be and how we are called to live. And that people like me and my family who have stayed inside these four walls for so many weeks will finally get to reconnect with all of the wonder and beauty that we know is waiting for us still outside this place. At this point in history, the walls are coming tumbling down. Thanks be to God. But I would invite you as disciples of Jesus to remember that Jesus not only breathes his peace on us, Jesus not only shows us that wounds can be healed, but Jesus gives us the power 
gives us the responsibility and the constant reminder that we are to set other people free as we ourselves have been set free. And if the pandemic has taught us anything, it has taught us that even after the vaccine has made the virus an artifact of history and that great and glorious day cannot come soon enough, even then there are those among us who are still imprisoned by invisible walls. There are neighbors that we know who are struggling with the walls of their addiction. There are people who have spent the past year living in homes that are violent and they're not sure they see a way out. There are people who are told every day by voices in this society that because of their culture, because of their race, because of who they were made to be by God, that they are less than that their lives do not matter and are not sacred. And friends, it is lies like these that build up invisible walls around people in this world. What walls have been holding you in? Where has Jesus set you free? And who is it in your life for whom you would be willing to walk through walls and say, there is a better way. And if you come with me, we can follow it together. Who is that person who set you free with the love of Jesus? And who is that person whose walls might be closing in on them a little too closely right now? Jesus walked through walls for the disciples, even for Thomas who somehow missed it the first time, Jesus comes back and he walks through walls for all of us still today. So my prayer for you is this. May you feel Jesus breathing deep peace into your life. May you trust, even after you've seen the horror of something like the cross, may you trust that with God, all wounds can be healed. And may you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to set others free, knowing that as you do, there is a love that travels with you every step of the way, a love that is so powerful that it will help you walk through walls. Amen. Dios nos envió a su Hijo Cristo, Él es salud, paz y perdón, vivió y murió por mis pecados. Vacía está la tumba porque 
el triunfo. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love. Heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Porque temo el mañana porque él vive mi temor se fue porque yo sé yo sé que él conoce mi futuro y sé que vale la pena vivir porque él vive en mí. In this morning's reading, I'm reminded of how often fear and doubts are responsible for the walls we seek to cover and hide behind. Yes, the disciples had every reason to fear the same mob that killed their leader. And to be fair to Thomas, he wasn't there to see what everyone else saw. Nevertheless, when fear and doubt get the best of us, we too retreat to wherever we can take cover, lock the doors, and draw the curtains. I remember doing precisely the same thing in February 2012. That year was a challenging start of the new year for me vocationally. After 11 years of service as pastor of a particular church in Tacoma, I resigned. And although several things precluded my resignation, the bottom line is that I found myself having to deal with immediate change and several questions. To name a few, what will I do? Where will I go? And how will I provide for my family? And you can add to the mix, what now? These questions explain why I enclosed myself behind the walls of fear, doubt, and uncertainty. As our reading points out, the walls and locked doors we choose to hide behind are no match for our resurrected Lord. And despite the disciples' fears and doubts, Notice how Jesus enters their world to settle their hearts and calm their fears. Similarly, just when I needed him most, Jesus broke through my fears and doubts to remind me that he would see me through the change I was facing. And that gave me the peace I needed to trust in God and the courage to press on. Nos ha llevado tiempo entender que la fe cristiana no es un asunto para fortalecer a grupos privilegiados que ejerzan poder. En mi vida, Jesús me ha ayudado a derribar múltiples muros y verme como miembro de una comunidad local y global que celebra la diversidad. En una experiencia donde nos respetamos y convivimos con otros en la lucha por la justicia, en búsqueda de un mundo donde todos seamos tomados en cuenta. 
Esta visión para mí ha sido una invitación constante a la renovación, renovación en la lectura de la Biblia, en la recreación de los símbolos, en la reflexión, en el servicio a otras personas y en mi vida cotidiana. Como pastor, como esposo, como padre, como abuelo y amigo. About a year ago, I was in a very different spot than I was now. Um, besides just feeling alone, being depressed, um, and, and being isolated, I had lost a sense of what love was and what um, family was and community was. Christ whispered into my ear when they came through the door at Trinity, take a chance on this one. I had no idea what God had in mind. It was impossible for me to envision the deep friendship that would develop as we discussed philosophy and theology, religion, and the faith practices that each of us had grown up in. But seeing the ravages of drug addiction in someone I cared about so much and who was so like me was a journey I had never expected to take. In a lot of ways, I see Christ in, in Ruth Marsh because of the unconditional love the patience and the compassion that uh, I never really understood. And so I got to quite literally um, link Jesus going through walls to the very walls of Trinity Church, introducing me to reintroducing me to Christ. And um, I really couldn't be happier. Well, hi, C. Crystal. Christ is risen indeed. God is alive in you and me. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For Jesus has broken through a wall in my life. It's through maturing in faith and never giving up. First, Life and death for me is a package of our existence. We can't say no to it, but let us see it as a gift every morning as the sun comes up or behind those clouds. Each one of us comes from different paths of life, and Jesus has shown us all the possibilities, including showing up beyond closed doors with his fearful disciples. As a church planter in the past years, and still is, Jesus broke through the wall in my life by meeting and listening to young adults, collaborators in their community organizing in the Portland and Vancouver area, and what a church could look like in a different setting. I have seen Jesus at work beyond the church walls. I felt Jesus' life when we met and prayed in Ikea, airport meetings, Bible studies in the community room in the library, and the texting back of prayers on Facebook, virtual worships, virtual Sunday school, Zooms for a social justice conversation and education. These are the coexistence of our prayers, service, witness. It is a different type of gathering with the intention of deep listening to the souls of the margins and oppressed. Above all, God be praised and we persevere. Let us all work as peacemakers in all the ways we can. Keep rising and showing up siblings of Christ and have faith. I invite you to enter into an attitude of prayer. Take a couple of deep breaths. Open yourself to the presence of the divine among us. No matter how far apart we may be, in this moment, in this time of prayer, we are bound together with love. And together, let us pray. For the people in our families and churches, for those who are feeling disconnected, lonely, and scared, 
for those who long for a human touch and a smiling face. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who suffer and are in trouble, we especially pray for those who have lost loved ones, for those who have suffered from the pandemic, for those who continue to suffer with chronic illnesses. We pray for the imprisoned, the forgotten, and the ignored. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the concerns of our local community, for our elected officials and first responders, for communities across the greater Northwest who are still recovering from devastating wildfires, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the world, its people and its leaders, for all people anywhere who feel unsafe or unwelcome, for the millions of refugees seeking safety in a better life, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the earth you have given into our care, we give thanks for the striking beauty that surrounds us, and we lament that we have not done enough to preserve your creation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Church Universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission, may we strive to be a place of welcome to all people. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In communion with the saints who have gone before us, we humbly bring these prayers that we have shared aloud and the prayers that we carry within our hearts to you, O God, our present hope and strength. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Receive now these words of blessing. Go forth into the world in peace to love and serve those who are still inside their walls, especially those to whom love is still a stranger. And as you go, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the companionship of the Holy Spirit go with you this day and every day of your life. Go in peace. Amen. Kailan may di kita ipagpapalit Pagkat sa piling mo'y langit Mahal na mahal kita pangin oh. Mahal na mahal kita pangin Sa piling mo 